Hi, my name is Bev Schechtman. I'm vice president of the Doctor Patient Forum. We've been hearing a lot on media, on the news, about misinformation and possibly holding people responsible and fact checking and all of that. I don't want to talk about politics, but I would like to kind of apply that whole idea to what's happening in the opioid reduction or elimination space. It seems as though no one is really holding the experts accountable. Kind of a free-for-all. Like they're allowed to say whatever they want. They're allowed to make claims that absolutely aren't true. They're allowed to misrepresent and misapply studies and they get paid to do it. And the funders don't seem to care and the medical boards don't seem to care, but I care. And I know you care because it's hurting us. So I'm just going to show you one tiny example. Dr. Dan Claw from the University of Michigan put out a webinar on the Michigan Medicine YouTube channel a few days ago. The video was about why do we still prescribe so many opioids, of course, right? Because that's all they seem to know what to talk about in Michigan. He was talking about opioid-induced hyperalgesia, which we know was part of the litigation narrative and incorrectly has been claimed that there is an abundance of evidence because we know that it's only been proven in studies of animals and not people. Absolutely is not an abundance of evidence. There's really not a whole lot of evidence. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but if it does, it's rare and it certainly hasn't been proven in human studies. But that doesn't stop Daniel Claw from claiming that it has. So let's listen to what he says. Over long periods of time, it actually led to the phenomenon called opioid-induced hyperalgesia that we have demonstrated repeatedly in animal and human studies. Demonstrated repeatedly in animal and human studies. That is a lie. Studies um, that opioid administration can, over time, make pain worse rather than make it better. So that's a lie. It hasn't been in studies. And he goes on to cite space and opal, neither of which at all proved opioid-induced hyperalgesia, considering the pain intensity after given opioids in both groups went down. Hyperalgesia, the pain intensity would have gone up because the very definition of opioid-induced hyperalgesia is you give opioids and pain gets worse, you know, just little details. But now I want to play a clip for you from Dr. Chad Brummett, same University of Michigan. He actually decided to tell the truth in a podcast that came out today, which I'm happy to hear, but maybe he should talk to his friend Daniel Claw to tell him to stop lying. So let's listen to Chad. I pivoted him in this way. Um, his pain wasn't necessarily better. I think there's sometimes an overemphasis on stop taking opioids because it'll make your pain better. Opioid-induced hyperalgesia, while I believe it's real, right? which is the concept that when you take opioids, it makes your pain worse, right? That's opioid-induced hyperalgesia. Taking opioids make your pain worse. Uh, so far, so good. The, the animal data, the, the preclinical data, the, the laboratory data, I guess I would say. So the animal data. Are crystal clear. Yeah. The, studies, the studies are really clear. Uh, you and I have been part of studies doing this people. It's really tough to study in people. Yeah. And it's not that I don't believe it. I just struggle to diagnosis and I seldom diagnose it. I, I, I very much believe in it as an NC. I think it's a hard to diagnose. So he's saying it's clear in animal studies, but not in people, which is weird because his pal Daniel Claw literally just said a few days ago, the abundance of evidence in human studies that OIH is common. So which is it? I mean, in this case, I almost never agree with Dr. Brummett, but I do here. So do we hold doctors accountable for misinformation? Do we fact check them? Once we fact check them and prove they're lying? Does anybody care? Does the medical board care? Is there any ramifications at all? Or is it just going to continue to harm patients and they just get to continue to spread it, misinformation? You tell me what you think. I don't know. I think they should be held accountable, especially when it's something so obvious that they're deliberately lying. But you tell me, Bev at the doctorpatientforum.com. What do you think? Thank you for watching. Have a great day. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe to the Dr. Patient Forum YouTube channel. You can also find us at www.thedoctorpatientforum.com or patreon.com slash thedoctorpatientforum.